You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nation. Let's begin with the headlines first. Park back terrorists carrying out attacks on security forces and civilians in Kashmir. India marks 20th anniversary of deadly parliament attack. And US report exposes Pakistan states it failed to counter terrorism. Let's begin the show with Kashmir, which has been continuously witnessing violence owing to the malicious agendas of Pakistan-backed terrorists. Islamabad has been relentless in its efforts in exporting terrorists into the Kashmir Valley to create mayhem by targeting security forces and the civilians. A report. Instability in Kashmir is Pakistan's main agenda as it suits its plan to draw international attention. It creates fear psychosis among the locals and sends a message internationally that Kashmir is not peaceful. In the past few days, many civilians and security personnel in Jammu and Kashmir have lost their lives in terror attacks. Recently, a group of police officers was returning to the police campus when three militants opened fire on a police vehicle outside the main city of Srinagar. Three policemen were killed in the attack and many more were injured. Sosi said that helmet-wearing terrorists flanked the bus on both sides on motorcycles and opened fire. Taking advantage of darkness, they managed to escape from this spot. However, in the retaliatory firing, one of the terrorists got injured. Investigations have revealed that the attack was planned and carried out after a recce was conducted in the area. Three militants, including two foreign nationals and a local resident affiliated with terror outfit Jaish e Mohammed, were involved in the attack. Jaish Mohammed ne khud bhi claim kiya. Jaish Mohammed ka terrorist involved hai. Hamare jawanon ne kafi firing kiya tha, jisme ek aatang bhi jakmi hua hai. Uska blood spot kafi dur tak dekha gaya hai. Ye khuru se pumper aur tral tral bhagne mein kamya ho gaya. Uska hum log track kar rahe hain. Bahut jaldi is group ko hum log neutralize kar lenge. और सबसे बड़ी बात है कि हमारे जवानों ने इतना अच्छा उनका मकसद था कि अटैक करके वेपन स्नेचिंग करने का और हमारे जवान ने रिटेलिटेशन बहुत अच्छा से किया एक वेपन स्नेचिंग नहीं हो पाया और इस ग्रुप को हम लोग बहुत जल्दी न्यूट्राइज करेंगे दिस अटैक कम्स डेज आफ्टर टू पुलिस मैन वर किल्ड आफ्टर टेररिस्ट ओपन फायर एट अ पुलिस टीम इन कश्मीर बांदेपोरा डिस्ट्रिक्ट मीन वाइल इन अपरेट इंसिडेंट द इंडियन सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेज किल टू लश्कर तैयबा टेररिस्ट in a brief chance encounter in Srinagar. Both slain terrorists were involved in several terrorist attacks and played a key role in a number of killings. The security forces in the valley have been given a free hand to deal with the terrorists. The security grid has been strengthened and infiltration of terrorists from across the border has also come down significantly. After a very long time, we've had the um... Uh, such a major incident taking place in Kashmir and that too uh, in, Sri, in Srinagar. Uh, while it is a very sad incident, I think it, it really signifies that uh, terrorism is, uh, uh, not that terrorism is increasing. Uh, I look at it in a different way. I think that terrorism is dying down now. And uh, there will be a few incidences uh, like this. This is the final uh, uh, spark, as they say, before the fire is, is extinguished. But uh, in my view, I think terrorism is uh, about to about to be obliterated from the, from the c c complete Kashmir Valley. Kashmir is witnessing the return of peace once again, and people have understood that terrorism and separatism cannot flourish in Jammu and Kashmir. This is the biggest pain for Pakistan. Therefore, handlers across the LOC, having lost most of their local mercenaries and operators at the hands of security forces have tasked the fewer terrorists to launch selective killings in the valley. Moreover, other reasons such as the deteriorating situation in POK are also contributing to the frustration of Pakistan. 
of larger concern really is what Pakistan is doing. You see, because uh, for, when you're looking at it from the uh, geostrategic angle, Pakistan is very concerned that they have lost the plot in Jammu and Kashmir. And uh, their, their bigger concern is now that they are likely to lose Gilgit Baltistan and Mirpur Muzaffarabad. These are the areas which have been illegally occupied by Pakistan. Uh, that is why they do not want terrorism to die down in, in the valley. And they are, they are doing their utmost to ensure that at least some incidents take place so that the uh, valley remains in the news in the international media. People and security forces in the valley have defeated Pakistan's machinations both at ideological and security levels. Intelligence and military officials in Pakistan should understand that aiding and abetting terror will not help them. They have no more excuses for supporting terrorism. Two decades ago, terrorists belonging to the lashkar e taiba and the jaish e mohammed entered the parliament complex in New Delhi and opened fire indiscriminately, killing nine people. The attack on the Temple of Democracy had brought India and Pakistan to the brink of war. Recently, Nation paid tribute to those who lost their lives on the anniversary of the incident. We take a look. The members of the Indian Parliament and security personnel are paying tribute to the martyrs who laid down their lives while defending the Parliament complex two decades ago. Twenty years ago, the Supreme Legislative Body of India witnessed a dastardly terror attack that shook the conscience of the country to its core. The horror of the day, December 13, 2001, is still fresh in the minds of the people of the country. Five terrorists of the Pakistan-based militant groups Lashkar-e Taiba and Jaish-e Mohammed infiltrated the premises in a white ambassador bearing fake stickers of the Home Ministry and Parliament itself. Carrying AK-47 rifles, grenade launchers, pistols and grenades, the terrorists breached through security cordons deployed around the Parliament complex. The threats to vital installations VVIP areas exist very much even today because Pakistan is hell-bent upon creating disturbances in India by sending in these terrorists whom it has been nurturing along for the last so many years. Since the 70s, ISI has been nurturing these jihadis and they are trained in the camps and then sent across to India to create this mayhem. Soon after the parliament attack, the investigation was taken up. In just 72 hours, the special cell of the Delhi police cracked the case and arrested four people. Muhammad Abzal Guru, Shaukat Hussain, Afsan Guru and Sar Gilani. Two among them were acquitted while Abzal Guru was hanged in Delhi's Tihar jail in February 2013. Shaukat Hussain served his sentence in jail. The perpetrators belong to Lashkar-e Taiba and Jaish e Mohammed groups. These two terror groups still pose threats to Indian security. They are continuously involved in anti India activities. Lashkar e Taiba and Jaish e Mohammed, Hizbul Mujahideen, and others, all these terrorist groups are there who are under the protection and guidance of the ISI. And we have seen that after 26 11, Masood Azhar. The entire dossier was given to Pakistan uh, where it was established that Masood Azhar planned this attack and with the American assistance, the transcripts of their communication their, uh, with the terrorists who were in, in Bombay has been given to Pakistan. But what Pakistan did was they never gave it in the court and with the result, all these people are either let away or put under house arrest wherein they are sitting there like kings with the army protecting them. Time and again, Pakistan's blatant role in supporting terrorism for its nefarious gains against neighboring nations has come to light. The South Asian country, which is the biggest perpetrator and supporter of terrorism, masquerading us as its victim. The ruling dispensation in Islamabad should understand that using terrorism as a political tool against others would be a threat to Pakistan as well. 
it should not forget what Hillary Clinton said years ago. You can't keep snakes in your backyard and expect them only to bite your neighbors. Eventually, those snakes are going to turn on whoever has them in the backyard. It's been four months since the Taliban swept to power in Afghanistan, something they did faster than anyone anticipated. Assassinations, bombings and economic crisis have undermined the insurgent group's claims that they have brought greater security to Afghanistan after 40 years of war. The conflict-stricken nation has been dealing not only with terrorism but with severe economic crisis and increasing poverty. These are the visuals of the road that links Afghanistan's capital of Kabul to its second largest city of Kandahar. It used to be a bloody highway of death during the past two decades of war. Explosives hidden in road sites, attacks and clashes made the road a dangerous place where thousands of people were killed or seriously wounded. Military uniforms, bulletproof vests and shell fragments from the war are found everywhere along the road. Despite possible traces of explosives, children from nearby villages still come to gather branches for the winter. They are left with no other options. People in war-torn country are struggling to have their lives return to normal. The two-decade-long war has torn many Afghan families apart and left their children severely traumatized. This little girl was left permanently disabled by a stray bullet while playing at home. Her sister suffered a head injury that makes her get scared easily. These two siblings are not alone. There are many others who are suffering. When the Taliban came, they promised a return to normalcy. They pledged to create a secure environment for common people in the country. But the reality on the ground is far away from those promises. Their actions are sending a different message. UN has received credible allegations of more than 100 extrajudicial killings, with most blamed on the country's new rulers. Recently, in the Human Rights Council, this serious issue of extrajudicial killings by the Taliban was raised. We are also alarmed by continuing reports of extrajudicial killings across the country, despite the general amnesty announced by the Taliban after 15 August. Between August and November, we received credible allegations of more than 100 killings of former Afghan National Security Forces and others associated with the former government, with at least 72 of these killings attributed to the Taliban. In several cases, the bodies were publicly displayed. This has, of course, exacerbated fear among the sizable category of the population. Taliban spokesperson say, that women must have the right to education and to work. But everyone in Afghanistan knows that such statements are simply false. Many fear the Taliban will roll back two decades of gains by women and ethnic minorities while restricting the work of journalists and NGO workers. With the military takeover of Kabul by the Taliban, not only we see a total reversal of two decades of advances in normative and practical areas of promotion and protection of universal human rights in Afghanistan, but the group is also committing a litany of abuses with full impunity, which in many cases is going unreported and undocumented. For example, contrary to the claims of general amnesty, they resumed the cycle of violence and vengeance. Accounts of the summary execution and forced disappearances, particularly of the government and security officials, and forced displacement of minorities reveal only a glimpse of their campaign of fear. Months after the takeover, 
Taliban have nothing much to show except public hangings, denial of basic rights, and a worsening terror situation. Afghanistan is on its way to becoming one of the poorest and most isolated with an immiserated middle class. With much reduced opportunities for work and even lower for immigration, not much can be said of how this country will be brought back to life. Pakistan has gained the international reputation of being the world's foremost exporter of terrorism. With the government's knowledge and the military support, terrorist organizations like lashkar e taiba and jaish e mohammed continue to operate and raise funds inside Pakistani territory. Recently, a U.S. State Department report exposed Pakistan's inaction against various terrorist organizations. Pakistani militant groups are killing civilians and engaging in terrorism in Indian subcontinent under the guise of holy war. The government in Islamabad supports these militants and their religious schools as cheap ways to fight India and other nations. But this policy is creating a culture of violence that exacerbates internal sectarianism and destabilizes the region. Without change, this monster threatens to devour Pakistani society. On terror charges, this notorious South Asian nation has been exposed on several international platforms. Recently, US slammed Pakistan for making no progress to counter terrorism. In its country reports on terrorism 2020, the US Department of State noted that several terrorist groups continue to operate from Pakistan, especially those targeting India, such as the LET and its affiliated front organizations and Jaish e Mohammed. This report clearly acknowledges that Pakistan has been continuing with its policy of cross-border terrorism as an instrument of its foreign policy. There has been no let up in that, even though it says that the Pakistan domestically, for its own sake, has been trying to fight with uh, some groups, uh, whether they were ISSK or the TTP or some others. But at the same time, it has not contained the jesh e Muhammad or lashkar e Toiba or Masood Azhar's and it clearly says that those groups have been let off. They have been trying to uh, uh, use terrorism against India. The U.S. State Department report noted that Indian security agencies are affecting and disrupting terror threats. It said that Indian government made significant efforts to detect, disrupt, and degrade the operations of terrorist organizations within its borders. It further added that India responds to U.S. requests for information related to terrorism investigations in a timely manner and makes efforts to mitigate threats in response to U.S. information. The report has revealed over the past two years, collaborative efforts have disrupted terrorist travel and alerted U.S. authorities to possible threats in the United States and against U.S. interests. Well, as far as India is concerned, India has been suffering from terrorism for five decades now. I mean, and Americans have only realized the intensity of that conflict only after the 9-11 happened. Before that, they didn't even care about it. But so today I'm happy and I've been reading these reports annually and whenever they are presented, because every April 30, I believe the State Department is supposed to come up with these kind of reports. A few months ago, U.S. had declared it would review ties with Pakistan in light of Islamabad's support to Taliban. Washington should now deliver a clearer public message to Islamabad. It should continue to take steps to limit Pakistan's access to global financial markets until Pakistan demonstrates that it is meaningfully addressing the fundraising and operations of India-focused terrorist groups. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. 
This is Uzma Jafri signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. You're watching Tag TV.